Hello again, it's Dr. Jalim Jafar. Today I will talk about bone loss and pattern of bone destruction. Please subscribe to my channel HL Talent to get more videos. Today I will talk about uh, some important notes to be known before we enter the, uh, the patterns of uh, destruction and the bone morphologies. Uh, we are just talking about five important notes. Uh, first of all, we should know that periodontitis is an infectious disease of the gingival tissue. Changes that occur in the bone are crucial because the destruction of bone is responsible for tooth loss. The height and density of the alveolar bone are normally maintained by an equilibrium regulated by systemic influences between bone formation and bone resorption. And when resorption exceeds formation, we know that both, both the height of the bone and the density of the bone will be decreased. The most common cause of bone destruction in periodontal disease is the extension of inflammation from the gingival margin into the supporting periodontal tissue. And the bone surface and the initial bone loss that follow it mark the transition from gingivitis to periodontitis and we know that f the fact that all of the periodontitis are preceded by gingivitis but not all gingivitis will proceed to periodontitis the extension of inflammation to the supporting structure of the tooth may be mo modified by the pathogenic potential of the plaque and resistance of the host mechanism so this is as introduction we talk about five important features of the bone loss and the bone formation one of them is a radius of action scientists suggest that a locally produced bone resorption may need to be present in the proximity of the bone surface to exert their action that say the plug should be in a proximity of 1.5 to 2.5 millimeter from the bone to exert the action. <clears throat> Otherwise, there will be no effect. Well, if you ask about the large defects, large defects that exceed 2.5 millimeter, they suggest that there will be a presence of bacteria directly on the bone and on the tissue. So if there is a distance from 1.5 to 2.5, the bacterial plaque can exert that action. Other than that, it has no effect. Unless there will be a floating bacteria or an attached plaque attached directly to the bone and soft tissue. This is one of the <coughs> features regarding the bone loss. The other one is the rate of bone loss. We know that uh, from the new classification of periodontology that we have three grades when we uh, measure the grades, the progression of periodontal disease. We have three grades. One of them is rapidly progressive and moderately pro progressive and slowly progressive. For those who rapidly progress, are approximately 8% of the persons, and they have a yearly of 0.1 1 to 1 millimeter of bone loss and attachment loss. While approximately 81, which is the majority of the patients, uh, have a moderately progressive periodontal disease, and the attachment loss of 0.05 to 0.5 millimeter yearly and the remaining 11 percent have minimal progression or no progression of periodontal attachment loss which is about 0.05 to 0.09 millimeter yearly so this is important to know about the the rapidity of the progression of the disease and this is 
uh, another feature of bone loss in the periodontal disease. The period of destruction we discussed in the relation of the pocket to the bone, to the alveolar bone, in the previous lecture, where well, we are talking about the pockets. We said that the bone have, uh, the periodontal disease have a site specificity. We have, for example, an exacerbation uh, and quiescence period, a period of remission and period of activity. Uh, and we, we said that in each of these periods, uh, a different mechanism will happen while still the disease is present. For example, in period of inactivity where there is still periodontitis, but there is reduced inflammatory response and little or no bone loss or clinical attachment loss. The disease is more stable and most of the bacteria that uh, appear in this uh, area is gram-positive bacteria. While in period of exacerbation or activity, there will be increased inflammatory response and increased bone loss and clinical attachment loss and build up of unattached plaque. The unattached plaque make the disease more active and progressive and more destructive as we talked about. Because the bacteria, the attached plaque, can't cause the disease if there is a distance between it and between the bone. While if we have an attached plaque and directly attached to the bone surface or to the tissue, so they can exert direct action on the on these two. And most of the bacteria are powerful and uh, destructive bacteria, which are gram negative motile bacteria, and may last for days, weeks, or months, and followed by a remission. So there is a continuous remission. Uh, remission which is a quiescence and exacerbation which is an activity and this is regarding the period of destruction we have two periods and uh, most predominantly occur uh, during the periodontal disease it is not the healing process it is just a period of activity and remission still the periodontal disease is present the another feature is mechanism of bone destruction the factors involved in bone destruction in periodontal disease are bacterial and host mediated. Bacterial plaque produce uh, pro the bacterial endotoxins induce the differentiation of bone progenitor cells into osteoclasts. They enhance the progenitor cells to, in to form the osteoclast and this will stimulate the uh, bone destruction or causing the bone destruction also stimulating the gingival tissue to do the same action the plug products and inflammatory mediators like neutrophil cytokines can also act directly on the osteoblast or their progenitors they will inhibit the action of osteoblast and reducing the number that's how there will, be, there will be more bone destruction than formation. Several host factors released by inflammatory cells are capable of inducing bone resorption. The host mediator or the immunity is one of the other factors that uh, contribute in the destruction of either the periodontal bone or alveolar bone and connective tissue loss by, for example, secreting prostaglandin or matrix metalloproteinase, the prostaglandin will affect or act uh, toward resorbing the bone, while matrix, matrix metalloproteinase act uh, in a pathway of destructing the connective tissue. So this is the mechanism of bone destruction. The destruction ha happens on two scales, by bacterial byproducts and throughout the host mediator or the immune system. Also, we have bone formation. Areas of bone formation are, are also found immediately adjacent to the site of active bone resorption, 
We said that the periodontal pocket have a site specificity. For uh, or periodontal disease or bone loss have a site specificity. There may be in just one tooth. In one side we have active bone resorption, and in the other side we have quiescent uh, bone resorption or a bone. Uh, creation or uh, bone formation the response of alveolar bone to inflammation include bone formation and resorption <clears throat> but results from the predominance of resorption over formation so there is more resorption than formation and that's normal in the disease actually new bone formation actually impairs the rate of bone loss compensating in some degree for the bone destroyed by inflammation and this is of great importance which affects the outcome of our treatment if there is still bone formation while there is an active disease why the, because the basic aims of periodontal therapy is the elimination of inflammation to remove the stimulus for bone resorption and by that allowing the inherent constructive tendency to predominate so we do treatment and if there is a tendency of reconstruction so we get a, a perfect outcome of treatment this these are the notes for today uh, and this is as uh, an introduction for the main subject which was <coughs> bone loss and pattern of bone destruction in the next lecture we talk about the bone morphology and bone destruction patterns thank you for your listening